while the West is at war with itself, you have unity fiercely imposed in China. And it's like that old saying, you know who your masters are by who you can't criticize. And increasingly, staggeringly, you would think on the surface, why is it considered so bad in the United States, for instance, to criticize China? You can't criticize China, it's racist, it's this, it's that or the other. Why is that? Why are massive companies and organizations like Disney and so many others and the National Basketball Association so uh, reticent about in any way criticizing China or allowing anyone to? Somebody related to basketball says something uh, less than... Um, positive about China, and suddenly there's this great furore followed most of the time by a groveling apology. Because the National Basketball Association and Disney and these other companies, uh, they want the Chinese audience. But it's deeper than that. It's about defending the cult agenda as well. And so, if you look at the focus, the official focus that comes in terms of who's a threat to America, it's not China, overwhelmingly, which is absolutely in your face. It's Russia. The, 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 the villain, the, the, the demon is Russia, but that's just to divert attention from the real um, threat to American society and Western society, and that is China. Then, uh, not surprisingly, China is um, infamous for stealing intellectual property out of the West, uh, not least through back doors on its uh, technology but by funding universities and academic uh, organizations, it's trawling intellectual property. When it buys up Western companies, which it is in great numbers now, then what, what it buys also is the intellectual property. And so if you're stealing ideas or just buying them, you don't have the big development costs because they come as a package already made. And that means that you can undercut in price the very companies you're stealing from covertly and you can undercut other companies who are operating in the same field, so they simply can't compete. This has happened over and over again. And you've seen how all these uh, phenomenal numbers of jobs have been outsourced to China. And how China has taken over basically vast amounts of global production. And what does that mean? There's now a, a dependency on China, thus control, for these products. 70% of the ingredients used in America come from China. China's also uh, become dominant in big tech, electronics, and uh, all these uh, areas of uh, what you call um, cyber technology. And this is why, and, and also the cult connections explain this, you've got these major Silicon Valley uh, giant companies that have fundamental and growing connections to China, which means the Chinese 
communist fascist government. So here's a few of them. Apple. The CEO Tim Cook reportedly signed secret uh, 275 billion deal with the Chinese uh, Communist Party for supply chain access. Cisco, a $100 million joint venture with Inspur, a company later blacklisted for connections to the Chinese military. Dell entered a strategic partnership with a company now owned by China's nuclear authority, i.e. the Chinese government. What explains this apparent contradiction of the West handing its power and supporting the Chinese regime to take over uh, makes absolute sense when you realize that these cult companies are serving a cult agenda to enhance the power and influence of cult-owned China. And then um, you have this dependency on the global supply chain with China. When you've got all your products um, basically being made there, well, obviously, they have to get to you. And that's a, a, a massively long supply chain. And China controls it. If they don't want the West to have something or a country to have something, then they won't have it. China has also become dominant in one of the key areas of cult ambition. And that's in the smart grid and the control of everything through artificial intelligence, which is what is happening um, in China. And China is out there, certainly among the leaders, of the production of this technology. I would say they absolutely are the leaders, given they've had the experience in their own country of building the smart grid. The smart grid, again, when you look to China, what you're looking at is what they want the world to be. That's the whole point. 